Dude, I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> Back in the 80s, man, we were just always trying to search out a, a way to be quote unquote stylish. <laughs> so everybody had their kind of like gimmick, you know, like Christian would have like things wrapped around his wrist, wrapped around his neck, five different watches. I think one day I was just like, you know what? I, I, I think I'm gonna wear suspenders. I think that'd be kind of cool, you know? <laughs> I wanted something flapping, you know? So I had a shirt, so I wanted some like, Suspenders or something flapping. For a couple uh, videos, you know, I kind of wore shorts with, with suspenders on them, you know, and I never actually put them on. <laughs> I've, not, you know, I've never actually seen anybody else wear those. I mean, even one video, I had a vest. I mean, who wears vests? I still have that vest in my closet, the one I wore in, uh, in Band This. I'm doing the board slide and I put my knee down on the side and, I'm, and I've got my ponytail and I got that, this vest. I'm gonna put it on eBay one day. <laughs> I've actually talked to people saying that I used to wear the suspenders, but I've never seen anyone else wear them. You're busting out all the good ones, right? The braids come about, came about like, I was watching this Manili Vanilli <laughs> video, <laughs> MTV video. I was like, dude, that would be so rad to bust those braids out like that, you know? Nobody wore braids. And I remember it was around the same time we were uh, filming uh, Future Primitive, and I'm doing that frontside invert in that bowl. Um, with my braids. But you know, I just kind of wanted to, just to be out there and be fashionable, you know, and kind of just do something different, you know. And then one time I actually had extensions in my hair. Josue's was like kind of just down and out, but I actually braided mine. So those were the full on uh, Milli Vanilli ones, you know, they were fake. I just thought it would look cool. And then you know what? I saw Mark Gonzalez in a photo with braids back around the same time. This is when Tony first got on the team, and you know, Tony really looked up to me and McGill, and he wanted to impress us, you know, and we could tell. I mean, I mean Tony, when he got on the team, he was the same size as me. I mean, he didn't sprout until years later. So he's just like little kid, you know, little scrawny little kid that wanted to impress us. He wanted to be so in with us and with the team. We could tell, so we were just like, we're gonna work this dude over. <laughs> so we told Tony that he couldn't be a part of our team unless he did something. He said, what do you do? What do you want me to do? I'll do anything. We were in the jacuzzi at that time. I was chewing gum. No, no, he was chewing gum. I, he, he was chewing gum. I go, I tell you what, for you to get on our team, you're gonna have to give me your gum. I'm gonna stick it in between my toes and then you're gonna have to chew it. I didn't think he was gonna do it and he did it. And I was just like, oh my God, this guy really wants to be on our team. <laughs> that was my hazing for Tony Hawk. Well, back in the day when I used to smoke pot, in Europe, they like hash. It was an 89 or 88. We were in Switzerland, and every time we'd go to demos, like, guys would bring us, like, nuggets of, like, of weed, you know, or, or hash or something. Just give it to us. At the end of the demo, we grabbed a, a Coke can in our hotel room and um, made a little pipe out of it. I think Tommy was asleep. I remember the whole time Tommy was sleeping and he, his eyes were open. I'd never seen him, like, seen a person sleep with their eyes open. I was like, dude, are you, like, awake? So Mike's like, what are you doing there? I'm like, oh, we're gonna smoke this hash. <laughs> He's like, oh, let me, let me try that. I've never done it before. I'm like, dude, you gotta, like, light it and smoke it and then hold it in. And he's like, dude, I don't know. I don't think it's, I don't think it's working. So he kept doing it over and over again. Well, well, it was working, so by the time we were done, he was completely wasted. He's all, dude, I, I feel like the room's spinning. I'm like, like you're doing a McTwist? <laughs> dude, how does Christian skate like this? I don't know how he skates like this either, but he does it. But to see McGill like completely wasted was, was a pretty funny experience. <laughs> and I don't think he ever smoked pot ever again. <laughs> Well, on the Vans Warp Tour, I got to jam with some pretty, pretty rad famous bands. Pennywise, Blink-182, No Use for a Name, Goldfinger, MXPX, and Mill and Colin. They knew that I played music, and a lot of those guys are really fan of skating, so they'd come and watch us skate on the ramp and stuff. A couple of them would be like, hey, why don't you come up and jam a song with us? So I'd learn the song in the, on the bus, you know, and then uh, go out on stage and play it in front of thousands of people. Once I did it once, they're like, hey, you want to come and do it again? I'd have this routine where I'd like skate and doing a demo, and then I'd see Pennywise getting ready to play. I'm like, okay, wait, guys, I gotta go play a song. Come up, I have all my pads on, put the guitar on. Hey, Fletch, you ready? You know, and play the song, and then go back up on the ramp and skate with Neil and <laughs> Frazier. Most recently now, I've been playing with this band called Asian Orange. Played like four shows already together, and, and instead of playing just one song with the band, I've been playing the whole set. It's been a pretty neat experience, you know, to get back into the whole music thing, because I hadn't played guitar in like eight years. I was over it, you know, because music's a hard thing, you know what I mean? It takes a lot of dedication and time. Getting a whole band and a group collective together is a very hard thing to do. But it's just like a no-brainer with Agent Orange. They got their thing going, you know, I just got to go in there and do my part and hopefully not screw up their, uh, their program. <laughs> no, and I would... 
know, sometimes I'll, I'll just, I'll be, try to be funny and I, I won't say Caballero. It has been taken a while from years for me to adjust to saying that because I just felt really weird saying, uh, naming a trick. Because I didn't name the trick. It was Stacy Peralta that named the trick. When I did it, I won the contest at Upland. And we used to make these intelligence reports and Stacy put, you know, Caballero wins with the Caballero. And so that's where the name came from. So for years, people would be like, oh, so it's Caballero. I'm like, oh, you mean the fakie, fakie 360 Ollie? And it just felt weird, like, saying that, you know? And then when, when um, Hawk and um, Staub invented the half cab, I mean, I didn't learn the half cab for years. I didn't even try it. I was just like, I didn't even think about it as a trick because, like, they're just doing half of what I... They can't even do the whole thing, so why, why would I, why would I want to do a half of it? So that never even came up. So it's a pretty much a staple in, in our industry and in other industries, the Caballero, Caballero tail, tail grab, half cab. But sometimes I'll just try to be funny and try to act humble. I'll say like, oh, you know, fakey 360 all. And then I'll let other people say like, oh, you mean a Caballero? I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> funny story. My real name isn't Caballero. My grandfather's name is Nakahara, which I did not know until my dad passed away. My dad changed his name. I found this out in 95. My dad changed his name to Caballero, his mother's maiden name. So my dad was born in Nakahara. I was like, you guys are lucky my dad changed his name because you always be doing half knacks. <laughs> The Half Cab uh, Metallica collab is like, that's a dream come true for me. It's insane, like who would ever thought like, I mean I heard of Metallica back in 1982. Tom Grohowski gave me a tape at a, uh, a Kona contest. Put it in, I'm like, wow, this is good. It was a Kill Mall album before it was really out. So I got into them, you know, and I've been a fan ever since. To think back then that I'd be, you know, Having my own shoe, for one, is a pretty amazing thing. And then having a collaboration with this band, Metallica, who's like the most, one of the most famous rock bands in history. That's pretty cool, you know? I think Jim or me, you know, one, it was like, put it on your balls. <laughs> Whatever. Puts on balls. Tiger ball.